Hi guys, and today we're going to be reviewing the Iwata Eclipse Iwata HP CS Airbrush. Now this has spray patterns down from 0.35mm all the way up to 50mm, so it's known, uh, if you like, as a jack of all trades airbrush where it can spray pretty fine patterns and also medium sized patterns so hopefully when you're spraying your models you'll be able to use this airbrush for most tasks so I'm going to put that to the test uh, in a little bit but first of all we're going to take it apart so I'll be back in a second and we'll do that so what do we get in the box well first of all we get an operating instructions leaflet so it's just going over your air pressure starting airbrushing and that sort of thing there you also get this from airbrushes.com if you purchase it from them it's an extension from the five-year warranty that I want to offer and they extend it to 10 years in the UK which is you know absolutely fantastic and again speaks of the quality of air, uh, a water airbrushes there you get a nice a water sticker and also a quick start guide for the gravity feed airbrush which we have here right so let's start taking it apart okay in the box you also get some super lube which i forgot to mention a moment ago and you also get a spanner for taking off the nozzle cap so first of all i'm going to take off the needle cap so i'm going to unscrew that like so Okay, now we're going to take off the nozzle cap. Not much pressure needed there. And the fluid nozzle on this airbrush is absolutely fantastic. This is how easy it is to take off and put back on. That simple. It literally just sits in the head of the airbrush like so. Now, the very front of the fluid nozzle can um, actually be unscrewed off, but I don't see why you'd ever need to do that. Let me just zoom in a second so we could uh, get that on camera. Whoops, sorry, not the camera. There you go, you can see that you could definitely unscrew that there, but you can actually clean, if we can have a look down the fluid nozzle, you can see you could clean out that straight from the front of there so if you're beginning to airbrushing this is the type of nozzle that you want a uh, fluid nozzle that you want to use it's going to make cleaning absolutely a doddle and simple and also a huge benefit of this is because that comes straight off the front like so if we just take off the preset handle from the back and we can undo the chucking nut like so we can then take the needle straight from the front of the airbrush now why does that make it easy say for example uh, you let me zoom out a bit guys say for example your airbrush is all dirty and you want to clean the needle out and you want to clean out the front of the airbrush so you literally you're just going to take the fluid nozzle straight off the front undo the chucking nut which we just did a moment ago and then we can literally take the needle straight from the front of the airbrush and any paint that's all gunked up on the front of the needle is not going to be dragged from the back of the airbrush as we take it out so taking it from the front of the airbrush is much better so that's a, a huge benefit of this airbrush what I'm going to do I'm going to just take the rest of the airbrush apart so, so we'll just take off our cup cap it's a nice tight fit there and now I'm just going to undo the needle chucking guide. And then that's going to have the spring and the spring guide. And then we've just got our trigger. So that's taken the whole airbrush apart. Uh, we'll come back and we'll pop it back together again. So let's put the airbrush back together again. First of all, we're going to place the fluid nozzle in like so. Then I'm going to put the nozzle cap on like so. Screw that on. It's nice and secure. And then 
and we're just going to put the needle cap on just like so then I'm going to replace the trigger back in there and there's a little cut out you might be able to see on this trigger and that goes facing towards the back end of the airbrush we can place that back in like so now we're going to place it in the spring guide would help if I was holding it the right way around it's a good idea when placing this back in is to angle it down and then up as you go in towards the airbrush so should be able to do that first time if you angle it correctly okay and there's a little tip here guys depending on how tight you screw the guide back in here depends on how tight you're going to have your trigger so if you prefer it to be a bit looser to pull back on you want to screw it and you can fine tune it and if you like it a bit stiffer tighten it up and you can see it takes more torsion to pull it back there right we're just going to replace the needle okay and I normally use my finger as a guide here because if it's floating about like so you can easily ding the tip so if you push it up to your finger like so should be able to push it back through fairly easily so we're just going to push that right through and just give it a little tap at the end to make sure it can't go any further just going to put on the needle chucking nut make sure that's nice and tight there and last is to put on the preset handle and that's putting the airbrush back together again we're going to come back in a moment and we're going to do some spray testing with the airbrush to see the different spray patterns that we can get out of this airbrush okay so i've put some airbrush paint into the airbrush and i've been using the com art color here from awata medea but you can use any pre-thinned airbrush paint or any acrylic paint that you actually thin yourself ready to spray out of the airbrush so I'm just going to do a few tests so we'll start off and we'll see some of the thinner lines that we can spray out of this airbrush I should have picked a darker colour actually so I might come back in a moment and do that with a darker colour so you can see more clearly the thinner lines that I'm able to get out of this airbrush and I am able to get ridiculously thin airbrush uh, lines I'll put my think finger here so you can see uh, uh, an idea of how thin a line we can get out of this airbrush And now I'm going to spray a larger spray pattern now, so just get rid of that and we'll make this. And that's quite a nice medium spray pattern that is guys, that's going to be perfect for base coating. you can see that sprayed absolutely beautifully so we're going to get some really nice fine lines but we're also going to be able to get some nice medium spray patterns out of it as well that's brilliant I'm really impressed on how smoothly it's actually spraying it's pretty simplistic for me to get really thin lines and then just obviously like any um, gravity feed dual action airbrush 
whilst pulling back further to release more paint and pulling the airbrush further away I'm obviously able to get a much wider spray pattern but the beauty of this airbrush is it's able to do both very well which is what you want from an airbrush especially if it's going to be your first airbrush you want an airbrush that's going to be easy to spray with and it's also going to be able to do a multitude of jobs so uh, I'm going to come back in a moment and we'll have a, a brief overview of what I think of the airbrush so let's go over some of the key features of this airbrush so first of all you can see that there's a cutout on the preset handle and the reason there's a cutout is so if you get any clogs on your airbrush you can quickly just grab hold of the chucking nut and pull back a few times and it will hopefully clean up the clog for you and you can get airbrushing straight away so that's a nice feature to have also when you see me taking the airbrush apart you see how simple it was to take the fluid nozzle off the front and the reason why that's so good is if you want to clean this airbrush as I mentioned before taking the needle from the front is super easy cleaning the fluid nozzle is going to be super easy as well and getting into the actual airbrush uh, itself from the, the head into the cup area is going to be super simple as well you're going to be able to get pipe cleaners straight through there so if this is your first airbrush it's going to make life so much easier when it comes to, to cleaning and talking of the performance of the airbrush well as you could see the fine spray patterns that I was able to achieve with this airbrush is absolutely fantastic also medium spray patterns are really good as well so it's going to be able to fulfill a number of roles and the key test for me is when I actually test this on a model I'm going to be using this airbrush to spray my Land Raider and I'm going to get it to do all tasks that includes base coating, varnish work, pre-shading which is going to be fine detail and then obviously doing shading and highlight work so I'm going to get this to be performing quite a lot of tasks on one model and hopefully I'll have that done within the next month or so uh, as a tutorial and we'll see how well this airbrush really performs but initially uh, as this review goes I think it's an absolutely fantastic airbrush I highly recommend it if you want to know more about this airbrush please check the description box down below I'll put a link down to airbrushes.com where you can check out more about this airbrush and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video guys I mean if you did please hit the like button and I'll catch you in the next one